welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to talk about 2019 and its significance to Hampton and what it means. It's another uh, 400th commemoration. Um, my guests are Dr. Kalita Fairfax from Norfolk State Hello. and a Hampton resident. Absolutely. Welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. And Claude Van from Aberdeen Gardens and also a very active Hampton resident. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You, you, this is your second 400th commemoration <laughs> volunteer gig. Absolutely, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve. Why? why? Why is it so important that we remember and celebrate our history? Well, I believe it keeps us in touch with the past, with who we are, with the tolls and the labor of people who came before us. It reminds us of our responsibility to our children, to all of our children, and to uh, remember to leave the environment a much better place than when we found it. Yes. Okay, now, for people who the, the number doesn't click in their brains, tell us the significance of uh, 2019 or 1619. 2019 marks the 400th, um, uh, uh, commemoration of 1619 and 1619 is the year that uh, African people arrived at Point Comfort August 20th to be exact as witnessed by John Rolfe who at the time was mm -hmm. the secretary to the Virginia colony and those persons who disembarked who had been uh, captured in Angola arrived on the White Lion disembarked uh, uh, some stayed in Point Comfort, what we now call it, uh, at one point was called Elizabeth City County, and some went to Jamestown. What is significant is that uh, Jamestown has been totally credited as the birthplace of, of African America, if you will, but that's not absolutely entirely so because there were uh, black people who uh, stayed. In fact, Antonio and Isabella uh, married and were servants in the uh, uh, home, the plantation of William Tucker, who was Captain William Tucker and commander of Point Comfort. And they birthed a son named William Tucker, and he was baptized in 1624 here in Hampton. And so we have here in Hampton essentially the first uh, African-American family uh, this is very significant. First, as far as we know, African-American born in this country, Absolutely. at least in the English-speaking region, not, not counting where the Spanish were Not at the time. counting where the Spanish uh, may have been located at the time. And we're still waiting for data uh, to show perhaps the development of African communities in, in Florida. Um, so this is really significant. It puts Hampton on the map. It's a story that we really shouldn't want run away from. Well, that's yes. okay. I was, there are two things in my brain I'm going to follow up on here. But the first one is when you say credited. I, I think there are a lot of people who don't think it's a point of pride. Where, no. where you know, it's bringing not. slavery to, to the English colonies is not a point of pride. And, and so in some ways, I think there's a reluctance on some people's part to claim that heritage. But at the same time, it happened. So when we celebrate it, and sure. you use the term celebrate, it's, it's what, what happened afterward, how the culture developed. I mean, it, we can't run away from that part of our history. And, and, and the enslavement era was so long God. and so heinous and brutal. And so uh, I believe that, that many uh, persons consider that to be such a scourge, and it is a scourge uh, in the history of, of, of America. But yet, uh, people triumphed and lived and survived and contributed immensely to what we now call American culture. And that's the piece of the story that I believe we can all uh, embrace and uh, uh, find dignity and respect in that story. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's how we cannot run away from it, not run away from the guilt, the uh, uh, ability to uh, recognize that, that one's humanity means something. And uh, I do believe that this can be used as a way of healing and reconciliation here in Hampton. Uh, for so many years, I believe it wasn't. 
uh, discuss. Yes, because of what you just mentioned, the embarrassment, if you will, right, of right. enslavement. But also I think that there was a sense of allowing Jamestown to have this story of perhaps people not wanting to own this piece of the story here in Hampton. So that's the other thing I want to follow up. Why? Why did, I mean, in public knowledge, there was a marker. There was a commemoration at Jamestown at the arrival of the first slaves. How does that part of history get ignored? And, and how did, did you and others bring it forward? Well, there have been a, a group about 1619 that has started to bring this to light. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what uh, had taken place that Jamestown got credit for, mm -hmm. uh, we're they trying to record. They better PR, it. maybe. After, <laughs> they, you know, they well, they're a, long established. They've been they have along, a around a long time. And, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, going back to a point that Dr. Fairfax made about William Tucker uh, being born here in Hampton, I, I take pride in knowing that his body is buried in East Aberdeen, mm -hmm. in, in, in the cemetery out there. So that's a point of history that people even in Aberdeen don't know. Really? So we have a great educational curve that we have to overcome uh, to bring people up to speed on what transpired uh, about their history. I've been uh, <laughs> gracious enough to hang around Dr. Fairfax and, and learn some of these tidbits of um, uh, information about history that I had no idea about. And when I was asked to join the commission, I said, well, this is an excellent opportunity for me to learn something. And I think when we stop learning, then we kind of die out. Uh, as I look at the legacy that has uh, occurred, it is important that this part of the legacy continue forward, that other generations learn what took place and the sacrifices that were made for them for them to get to the point that they're at now. And I think a lot of the today's generation don't really understand those sacrifices. And, it, and it's painful. I mean, it's painful for Caucasian Americans to right. be, you know, realizing that their descendants perhaps, I mean, a lot of us came after, but, you know, it, we're a part of that. And mm -hmm. it's even more painful for African Americans to go back and think about that part of history and what they owe their ancestors. I mean, it, it all just being so painful, how do you get people past that and willing to hear the stories? That's, that is what the commission is tasked to do. Uh, Project 1619 is absolutely credited with ensuring that this story was heard by state officials, by persons at Jamestown. Calvin Pearson is credited uh, as He's the founder so work, of yeah. absolutely of Project 1619 as a grassroots organization. They really put this story out there on the map. They are to be credited. We are fortunate that we have strong progressive city leaders, Vice Mayor Linda Curtis, Councilman Will Moffitt, our wonderful Mayor George Wallace, who, who saw the need for the city to create a commission so that the city can have a body working in behalf of, of the city to ensure that this story will gain perpetuity uh, in the life of and the public memory of, of the city of Hampton. Uh, painful, no doubt, because not only are we really speaking about a, a enslavement, a, a period of time of 200 years to uh, over 200 years, but we also are speaking about the Civil War and what occurred with the Civil War and after the mm -hmm. Civil War right, and how right. different communities in Hampton uh, either progressed or stood still economically, politically, and all that is connected with the legacy of enslavement. But I believe as a social scientist that the more you talk and unpack history, the more that you Unpack come together. Unpack history. I absolutely. love that term. That's a great term. <laughs> and, and look at the interplay of history and policy. We all can learn something and, and grow enriched and be the better for it. And I believe that that's something that we need to do as communities. We find in Rhode Island the same discussion is being held with the DeWolf family, being a large slaveholding family in Rhode Island, very active in the Episcopal Church, but they're having reconciliation discussions. We saw this happen in South Africa after the fall of the apartheid system with reconciliation and truth commissions. I do believe we need to have the same kind of discussion 
here in Hampton, in the state of Virginia, and some of that has been occurring with the sesquicentennial movement uh, throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia mm -hmm. with and regards the to the Civil, Civil War. War. Exactly. Well, you also went through this for the 400th anniversary of the yes. city, because it's it's my impression, you know, and I lived here um, at the 375th anniversary, mm. and that was a little different, and by the time we rolled around to the 400th, <laughs> you all were willing to deal much more with the fact that rah, rah, we established Hampton means rah, rah, we drove out the native people who lived here right. before us. And right. you have to come to grips with a lot of pain and discomfort when you, when you look back you at do. history. But you also have to come to grips with this whole notion of courage. Dorothy Rouse Bottom, who I became uh, friendly with as we worked on the 400th Commission, stood up in a meeting and talked about the decimation of the Kikatan people, that we need to talk about that reality. Mm -hmm. She uh, was a white woman who uh, saw uh, the right side of history and decided to occupy that. There were other people. Carolyn Hawkins is another woman I worked with on the commission. There were many people who, uh, white and black, who saw the need for this history to become uh, discussed and owned by all races, all people, and that's the point that we need to get to right, with regards right. to this point comfort narrative. I think so too, and I think we're going to have you guys come back because we've got some time, and this is, sure. as you said, something we need to unpack, something that will unfold that we need to let our residents be aware of, and, and the broader community, we, need, we do need to celebrate it. And there are so many outgrowths that came out of Hampton. When you look at Hampton Institute, Hampton mm -hmm. University, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, I always say that aviation really started here in Hampton, Virginia. Absolutely. Because had it not been for Hampton Institute, Booker T. Washington going down to Tuskegee and the Tuskegee Airmen experience taking place at Tuskegee, that part of history would have been lost. So we have some great history here in Hampton. Uh, I don't think people really realize what a great place this is for history. Uh, for all denominations and all uh, cultures, uh, the church has had a significant part of it, and, and we really want to applaud them uh, and want them integrated into this activity. So we've got a lot of plan for uh, 2019 and years before, too. Uh, we, we've got a lot of things on the drawing board. So I know that, you know, obviously it's very early, nothing's finalized yet, but, but in general, what are you guys thinking? How, what kinds of things are we going to be doing to, to honor this tomorrow? Uh, we're going to have some signature events with some very prominent people that you probably have seen in the news at one time or another. Uh, we look for uh, establishing some buildings that will be carried on after the celebration that we can go to and, and uh, get a better feel for the history of this area. Uh, we have worked very closely with uh, Glenn Oder out at Fort Monroe Authority, and uh, we see that as a, a great part of this endeavor, as well as uh, some of the activities that are happening with the Tucker family, mm -hmm. uh, as well in the cemetery. In the cemetery uh, Aberdeen Your Gardens is an outgrowth of, yeah, uh, exactly. of things of that nature. So there are a number of uh, different activities that have uh, will occur. Uh, we certainly look for some celebratory um, activities that will take place, uh, and I think it will be a great venture uh, for people to migrate uh, to Hampton, Virginia, not just for the Jazz Festival, not for homecoming for Hampton University, not for graduation, but this point in history that is so important uh, that will shape the lives of our children. And uh, one of the things I told Dr. Fairfax, I really wanted to be a part of this because I want my grandchildren to understand the importance of this history. So that's why I want to be a part of this. Well, and that's, you know, when you when you stretch it and say, we're not just looking at 1619, which is a very painful moment, and, and claiming the beginning of the slave trade in, in English-speaking America is not a point of pride. But you look at, it did begin there. The ending with, with the contraband decision wasn't the 
final freedom, but it was really uh, it, it bookends, Absolutely. sort of. So the beginning, sort of the beginning of the end. And then, as you said, you look at what has happened since and the post-Civil War era, the, the contraband era, the establishment of you know, black property owning and middle class in Hampton, and then the influence of the military and desegregation yeah, sure. and the opening up of more equality. I won't say we're, we're entirely there yet, sure. but you know, that whole piece that Hampton has played from the beginning until today and then hopefully into the future. Well, it's gotta be a continuous process. You can't just start it and stop it. Right. It's gotta be something that is constantly evolving and people have to be involved. And we are encouraging the citizens to come out and tell us what you would like to see happen at this event. And you guys are pretty visible. Yeah. I think people know people know how to find you. So if they have ideas, if they have input, if they want to volunteer for a subcommittee, we Absolutely. have you guys are you know co-chairing a board, but you're going to need a whole lot Absolutely. more help Absolutely. when it comes to executing on these exciting plans. Yes, we Absolutely. Will. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming by today. Well, thanks and for having us. Thank you. Thank you. And as this, you know, as we unpack this history, you're going to come back we and hope tell so. us Absolutely. some more yes. stories. Yes. Thank you for having. Thank us. you. All right. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope you are beginning to understand and appreciate part of the important history we have in Hampton. And, and not just to celebrate the past, but how it has influenced um, us and our generations and how it will influence our future generations, as Claude says. Thanks for watching.